What's going on guys? Welcome back to This Is The Police. It is day 10. We are earning some money. We're firing people. It's all fun. And today's newspapers, let's take a look at these. They say, Mayor Rogers displeased with police department. That's not much of a surprise. Um, I didn't actually do everything that he asked me to do. And then also, it's pretty clear that he does not like me. Um, even though we did do that last thing for him, I believe he wanted us to beat up the feminists, so we did that. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna get into some legal trouble for that. We have a hearing tomorrow. Uh, that should be really interesting because that's all new. It also says local resident denounces mayor for theft of antique necklaces. <laughs> and Freeburg authorities halt campaign citing city safety. So apparently the mayor is kind of a thief as well. Don't know what this is all about. And again, I can't help but wonder if we're going to get a better car. Uh, let's see, I was up all night and I couldn't sleep and now I have this ringing in my ears. Can I take the day off? You know what? That's relatable. That's relatable. We've all had a bad night's sleep. I'm going to tell this guy, okay, but you're going to come in tomorrow then. And all right, we have one stripe to give away. We have some good cops in this uh, in this shift. Not all very good. I think I'm just going to give this one to Yancy. He's really proven himself. And then also last week, I, I just kept one of these stripes and I didn't give it away. So I'm going to give this one to Yancy. He's really proven himself. He's a great cop. Kochi has a stripe, even though she's worse. So he deserves it. Now let's see what we can get into today. Let's see if there's some sweet crime going on. Alright, let's see. Don't forget to prepare for the upcoming meeting with the prosecutors. That's tomorrow. Richard Vandal is today a hero, having pulled a drowning Senator Wallace Green from the river. The municipality, municipality on the Senator's recommendation has decided to reward this outstanding officer. The ceremony is scheduled for July 27th, so that's three days from now. And the event will be open to the press as well as Mr. Green's family, who wish to personally thank the police. Make sure nothing unusual happens to this officer so he will be able to attend the ceremony and receive his medal without complications. We'll do. Uh, Vendal is actually not in this shift, so there's no danger of him dying today. Luckily. And yes, we have one more uh, slot because our best officer actually left. So we're definitely going to hire this guy. Look at his professionalism. Uh, we're going to hire him for shift, let's see. Yeah, shift A. Oh, wait, nope. Uh, Alright. Shift A. Boom. Vela, that's a weird name. Elias Vela, okay. But we're going to hire him, he's really good. Uh, let's see, sometimes your officers will arrest only one or two criminals, but when you're taking on a whole group, it's better to bring a paddy wagon. A truly professional staff can cope without the need, but most officers prefer a paddy wagon when the situation calls for it. Too bad the department doesn't have the money for one. So we don't have one of these. I guess maybe later we can get one. Maybe if we play that, uh, nice with the mayor, we'll get one of these, but okay. Um, an ice cream van struck a schoolboy. The ambulance arrived quickly, but the boy was declared dead on the scene. The nearby residents are enraged and demand justice from the driver of the van. He's currently holed up inside the ambulance while the paramedics try to reason with the crowd. The situation is quickly spiraling out of control. Now, we've got a whole crowd to deal with, so I'm just going to send my best officer on the case. Um, again, we don't have one of these vans, which it would have been nice uh, if we did have one. I guess maybe later we can get one or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, because I didn't really see an option anywhere to, to get one. Yeah, we don't have any of this. Alright, so we fired three officers. Alright. Also, apparently the guy that we just hired has three stripes they just showed me. So that guy is going to be really professional. I'm just curious to see if we start working with the Mafia more. Um, I'm guessing my officers are going to start turning against me every now and again. Oh boy, some black gangster hit one of our shops. It's too much for us to deal with right now. Alright, so I'm going to send my two of the worst officers I have available and then Purdy. I'm uh, going to help out Mr. Sand. Because that's a good way to get some money. Uh, the situation is more serious than we thought. We need reinforcements. Alright, I'm sending everyone that is available currently. We're going to deal with the situation. If there's another crime that pops up now, then we're not going to be able to send even a single cop out there. So that would be bad. Although Yancey is almost done. With the... Oh, actually, no. He's actually on that case still. Alright.
Alright, here we go. We have something going down today at the courthouse in 1830. We wouldn't want any policemen crashing the party. I think $6,000 should be enough. Alright. Again, we're just going to look at what's really going to happen. If it's something really, really serious, I am just going to go out there. Oh, it's a noise complaint. Um, okay, an elderly man called the police station reporting that terrible screams have been coming from the sawmill for over an hour. The hell's going on? What's a guy got to do to get a little sleep around here? You better go check it out. Why are you sleeping at 1 in the afternoon? Alright, attempted murder. Actually, that, okay, though, that, that kid died, but we took care of it. And we almost have some officers available. And there we go. So it is a noise complaint. It could be very serious. Someone could actually be trying to murder someone out there. Um, it could be a false alarm as well. But just to be safe, I'm just going to send out three officers out there and take a look. Road. Mr. Boyd, I manage a large fleet of vehicles and wanted to organize a workshop for my new drivers. They have to learn how to behave on the road, so your patrolman will never even need to look twice at our cars. Please send three of your best officers. They'll ride all day with my people and explain the intricacies of traffic flow and police monitoring. I've heard about the problems your apartment faces, particularly your obsolete fleet of police vehicles. So in return, I would be happy to donate a paddy wagon. See, that's going to be really nice. So we are going to go out there. I'm just not actually going to send my very best officer. And all right, we're ready. So I'm going to send Kochi, uh, I'm going to send uh, Asano, and I'm going to send Kane. They can deal with that. We do need a paddy wagon, so that would be really nice, but I don't want to send my very best cops out there. Even though he asked for it. An emergency call was received from an all-night drugstore. An addict is attempting to gain unlawful entry. He violently threatened a female pharmacist, demanding she open the cabinets. Now, we don't have enough officers to deal with this right now, and I... I'm not sure that we can just send two people. The sawmill is surrounded by a nine-foot fence, and the gates are locked from the inside. Shouts can be heard from within. I guess we just knock on the gate. This is not enough reason to just ram the gate or break it open. Just knock. A man is threatening a young boy with a circular saw. The man is screaming hysterically. All right, so this is pretty serious, so I'm going to say we raise our guns. He escaped, even though we had our guns out. How does that work? Isn't the point of aiming your gun at someone that you can actually shoot when the need arises? Alright, so all I have is these two people. Let's hope that it's enough. It's only it's one uh, crazy person. If we just use some violence, we might be able to take care of him. I say when he if he has a knife or anything like that, we instantly just shoot the guy right in the face. Chief, we rode along and went over the basics with our empty-headed drivers. We're done for the day. Meanwhile, Mr. Mr. Sen dropped off a brand new petty wagon, so he did get it. It's a nice piece of equipment. Too good for the idiots we'll be packing inside. All right. So we have a paddy wagon now. I'm guessing we are actually going to get to use this a bit more than just once. At least I'm hoping. Oh, boy. During sentencing, a serial killer by the name of Albert Ramirez seized a gun from the holster of the court bailiff and after shooting several witnesses, barricaded himself inside the courtroom. A young st uh, stenographer, stenographer, I don't even know, has been taken hostage. This is super serious and we are going to need more people for this. Sadly, we only have three officers available. Alright, let's see. Offender was caught and nobody was harmed. Alright, thank God. I guess two officers was enough. I'm going to wait for Yancey and Austin to get back before we get on this homicide thing. Because we're going to need five people and we are going to need SWAT as well. If he's actually shot several people. Oh, an assault. No. Emergency medical services arrived on call for a man complaining of chest pains. While they were treating him, the man suddenly attacked one of the EMTs, shouting wildly about the global pharmaceutical conspiracy. The other personnel managed to escape. Alright, so clearly the homicide is much, much more important, so I'm going to send... Alright, everybody out of here, pretty much. Alright, here's what I'll do. I'm going to send these four. I'm going to send SWAT as well. I think that should be enough. Then I'm going to send Purdy to the assault. It's just one dude. It's probably not that bad. Again, if the need arises, we just shoot the guy and be done with it. This is America, after all. You can just shoot people here. It's not a big deal. I've seen it on the internet, so it must be true. 
All right, let's see what we can do. Oh no, situation is more serious than we thought. Requesting reinforcements. I don't have reinforcements. They are literally asking for just about the entire shift, which I can't do. All right, just for once, let's just see what happens if I refuse. Let's see if someone actually gets injured. See, nobody was harmed, except for all the people that were killed. But yeah, we still got them, so it does still work. We don't know why you did it, but we hope you had a good reason. Don't forget who your friends are. I mean, I totally forgot that that's what he asked for, but... Um, you know, clearly it was a very serious situation. The door to the apartment is locked from the inside, and unintelligible screams can be heard from within. Knock on the door. The victim is bound and lying on the floor. The assailant is sitting on top of him, waving a syringe filled with an unknown su uh, substance. A bottle of bleach is on the floor nearby. Oh, God. Point the, this. I'm going to point my gun. The man jumps up and grabs some papers from the table. He's actually wearing a little tinfoil hat. <laughs> Everything is written down right here. All the evidence you'll need. They created these medications to control our minds. I'm going to strike the shit out of them. There we go. That totally worked. Oh, a civilian was killed. Okay, that's definitely bad. Don't really know how that works. So while I was beating the shit out of him with my nightstick, apparently he still got the chance to kill the civilian. That seems a little bit strange, but okay. Doesn't really, you know, seem realistic. Alright, let's make sure there's no more crimes before I actually end the day. Yeah, we're good. Alright. Let's just end that day then. Uh, let's see, everybody's okay. At least none of my officers were injured, that's nice. Kugaranis is really tired apparently. I'm just gonna end the day. All right, so it's day 11. This is the day of the hearing. It's gonna be really interesting. Uh, the he today's headlines read, small drug dealers invade Freiburg. Um, all city hall employees awarded company cars for personal use, that, okay. Uh, Freeburg to host semi-finals of Youth Hockey League. Alright. Well, let's just see how this hearing's gonna go. Mr. Boyd, why don't you send your officers to the feminist protest? It's my job. They could prove a threat. We receive noise complaints. Uh, let's just say they could prove a threat. I guess that's more... Credible, or actually it's my job to just send officers. That actually is my job. It was a major event the police were obliged to attend. See, that makes sense. In your opinion, did any of the participants at the protest pose any actual danger to others? Definitely. <laughs> Whenever there's over 50 people gathered in a single place, there's always a chance something will go off. Mr. Boyd, you're married, are you not? Yes. Yes, but my wife and I don't live together. Why or none of your business? You know, actually, that is not at all relevant to this case. So there you go. Don't try to bring my family into this. What are your personal feelings about women? That actually is an, an improper question. Are you a prosecutor or a therapist? Your questions are misleading and irrelevant. This has no bearing on the case. There we go. Mr. Boyd, did you give the order to suppress the protest by force? We can say yes, or we can blame City Hall, but that's going to lead to a whole lot more trouble, possibly. And also, I'm not really sure... I mean, evidence is going to definitely surface later that shows that I gave the order, so I'm going to say yes. Yes, it was my order. I have no other choice. I have to take responsibility, I guess. In my new role as corrupt official, I had to give up some of my favorite habits. I couldn't turn off my phone when my head ached, couldn't sleep till noon on Saturday and let the rest of HQ take up the slack. No more days off to go fishing, but my weekly visit to the old colony club was more like tradition. One night a week, I absorbed cigar smoke, the vague smell of alcohol, the stench of urine, all mixed with toxic levels of old drunken belches. Same picture it was 30 years ago. Tradition's got to be honored. And to stay faithful to the tradition, you've got to respect the standard rituals. When you're about to roll out of the club, you need to take a deep breath and count to a hundred. 
If your stomach doesn't do a backflip, you should be good to make it home. This time I only got up to 60. I was interrupted. Why? You look even better than you do on TV. There's nothing more impolite than approaching people in the alley at the old colony. This is the most private place in the city. All who enter here dirty their shoes with the most elite stream of vomit in Freeburg. This asphalt has been blessed by judges, lawyers, artists, businessmen, and all our politicians. Takes a lot of balls to crash the party. My head was a drunken haze, but I knew who he was. A cartoon gangster suit straight out of Dick Tracy. Fancy voice, fruit cologne, sassy strut. That's how the newspapers described Vikis Varga, rising star in Freeburg's criminal underworld. He appeared out of nowhere, and with the support of the local punks, Varga broke all the old rules of organized crime. He killed those who could not be killed, traded what could not be traded, and robbed those who could not be robbed. In just a single month, this man had gathered an incredible amount of power. He's been called everything from a clown to a madman to a criminal genius, and more often than not, he's called a low-class upstart short on ideas. But if Vargas was one of the old crime bosses, He'd have been cut into pieces and fed to the river. Look past this guy's arrogance and there's something about him. The city is still deciding what to do with him. Meanwhile, he's burning down the houses of old city mobsters. Not the best time to talk, Mr. Varga. Ma, oh, you know my name. I'm flattered. Although not very surprised, to be honest. I might be a little short on manners. Like they say in your fair city, with the right manners, you can go anywhere. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay right here. Even the criminal world needs manners, Mr. Varga. And one of them is this. Don't interfere with a drunken cop who's trying to take a shit and puke at the same time. Oh, you exaggerate. But is Freeburg always so gentle with its officers? You've been a bit roughed up lately. I see you already know Freeburg quite well, Mr. Varga. Well, I love to learn and look around, but I do know that the inhabitants of this fair city should be friends, Jack. Maybe it's true I don't have the best manners. After all, it's only polite for friends to share their phone numbers. This city of yours moves so fast. I feel like I'm hooked on amphetamines all over again. You wake up in the morning full of ideas, and by nightfall, you've all had each other killed. So don't wait too long to call. I don't mind if you're drunk. It's all the more fun. I'll be stoned myself, most likely. Hell, I'm a little stoned right now. It's the only way to live in this place. I like your city, Jack. I'm here to stay. If it weren't for the phone number written on my arm, I probably wouldn't have remembered the conversation in the morning. But there was no reason to worry. I'd be getting a reminder soon. I don't know what that was all about. That was interesting, to say the least. Uh, actually, I was pretty sure that he was coming to kill me because I did not do what the Mafia asked me to, but I guess we're good. That's nice. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it here for now. In the next part, we are going to be doing the next day, taking care of business and preparing to get that one cop guy's medal. I'm not really sure what that means, so that should be interesting as well. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.